Hi, welcome to our channel Good News. Everyone from Alibaba to appliance leader Gri is creating their own chips as a side business because American sanctions are hitting hard. Asking the CEO if the business is creating its own microchips is a novel technique to determine whether a Chinese company is a major player. Numerous Chinese enterprises started 2021 with a side business in the chip industry after a protracted state-led campaign to establish semiconductor independence. Baidu, Alibaba, the smartphone manufacturer manufacturers Huawei, Xiaomi, and Oppo, as well as the home appliance manufacturers Gri, Medea, TCL, and Hire are all on the list of those who are attempting. While some are new to the demanding game, some have prior expertise producing chips, they enter a place that is getting busier. According to data company Kichacha, approximately 22,000 new semiconductor businesses were established in China in 2020. There were 4,350 more in the first two months of 2021. It's widespread frenzy is caused by a number of factors, chief among them the Chinese government's desperate need to decrease its reliance on imported chips. Semiconductors are a major barrier preventing the nation from becoming a tech giant. China brought in $350 billion worth of semiconductors in 2020, or one-sixth of all imports. China is capable of mass-producing practically everything, but it is still unable to make high-end microchips. China created an investment fund worth $22 billion in 2014 and an additional $29 billion in 2019, but little has come of it thus far. These side businesses and semiconductors have thus far focused on the design phase, when technological obstacles may be more easily surmounted. Even now, Samsung or Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company still contract out the actual fabrication to overseas foundries. Large Chinese corporations are still a long way from realizing the country's objective of total independence, even if they are able to achieve advancements in chip design, the decisions are still sensible from a business standpoint. It lowers the risk in some businesses' supply lines. The U.S. penalties that ban Huawei from buying processors from American businesses serve as a lesson. The worldwide chip shortage that began this year serves as a further warning that foreign suppliers can easily lose their reliability, even for businesses in less sensitive industries. A self-designed semiconductor can better serve unique internal demands than a chip acquired from another maker for internet businesses like Baidu and Alibaba, both of which are working on cutting-edge projects in cloud computing and artificial intelligence, the IoT's power. Although these chips are often lower-tech, home appliance manufacturers regularly import a lot of chips to power televisions, air conditioners, and refrigerators. That is changing as Internet of Things technologies advance. The chips used in household appliances must advance if they are to connect to Wi-Fi or 5G networks or have audio operating systems. The Iron Lady at the helm of GRI Electronics the leading manufacturer of air conditioners in China, Dong Mingzhu, made headlines in 2018 when she said that the business will spend up to $7.7 billion to develop its own semiconductors. This change is being encouraged by Zhuhai, where Gri's headquarters are located. The local administration declared in October of last year that it will create a semiconductor sector worth more than $15.4 billion by 2025. Isn't much information out there about Gri's accomplishments so far. However, its rivals are behaving similarly. China's well-known appliance manufacturers TCL, Konka, and Midia have all established subsidiary semiconductor firms in a flurry of activity that began in 2018.As opposed to this, Huawei began its own semiconductor development more than 20 years prior to American sanctions. High Silicon was created by Huawei in 2004 to concentrate on chip manufacturing, a move that was questioned by many and ignored by everyone. High Silicon has produced a variety of chips throughout the years that may be utilized in wearable technology, servers, and smartphones. The only Chinese business now regarded as a serious player in the global semiconductor market is this one. Even if it's late, other smartphone manufacturers are moving in a similar direction. Three years after investing in the semiconductor industry, Xiaomi released its first chip. Since then, hardly much development has been noted. Oppo's study and investment in semiconductors just started in 2019. The return on such investments will be slow to come, big tech only markets to itself. Among China's big tech firms, Baidu is the first to have entered the semiconductor industry. It began funding chip development in 2010 and unveiled Baidu Kunlun, a semiconductor for boosting machine learning, as its first fully developed product in 2018. Kunlun is made to be adaptable. It may be used to consumer-facing devices or centralized cloud data centers. A less advanced chip, Honghu, was also released by Baidu in 2000. 
2019 to power smart speakers in automobiles and household appliances. The emphasis of Baidu's chip efforts is AI. The Chinese big tech business most interested in cutting-edge AI is Baidu, which has long positioned itself in this position. This necessitates intensive computation, necessitating processors with unique architecture. An internet corporation must run its operating systems and apps on its own hardware for them to perform better. Apple's chips and iOS are two examples according to protocol. He Hui is the chief semiconductor analyst at the London-based firm Omdia. Internet businesses like Baidu eventually hope to create an ecosystem that includes cloud servers, a search engine, and a self-driving system. However, stronger hardware is required to support the software ecosystem. In exchange, Baidu's environment gives it plenty of opportunities to test its chips, in contrast to a specialized chip business that must locate external customers. By late December, 20,000 Baidu Kunlun chips, which are utilized in Baidu's own servers, including those for its flagship search engine and cloud services, were outsourced to Samsung's foundries, according to Baidu Chief Technology Officer Wang Haifeng. The other chip, called Honghu, is used in Baidu's well-known smart speaker and its auto operating systems, both of which generate annual sales of millions of units. Outside of its own enterprises, Baidu's chips are rarely used. He Hui, though, speculated that selling chips could not even be in the company's plans. Online businesses are manufacturing their own chips. They aren't producing it to market to other people. Alibaba has made the most semiconductor investments of any rival to Baidu. Alibaba acquired a local chip manufacturer in 2018. This firm then changed its name to Ping to the Semiconductor. Since then, it has released two AI chips. Six additional semiconductor firms have received significant financing from Alibaba, Tencent and ByteDance appear to be working hard to catch up. Four times in a row, Tencent has invested in the chip firm Inflame, and a subsidiary cloud computing company founded in 2020 includes chip making as one of its core business endeavors. Although ByteDance, the youngest of the four, is aggressively seeking candidates with chip making experience, the business has not yet made any firm intentions public, long wait, large sum. Investors are placing large bets. 32 Chinese semiconductor startups went public in 2020, according to private equity company Winsoul Capital. Another $20 billion worth of investment has come into private enterprises, which is four times more than in 2019. Major VC companies like Sequoia and Hillhouse Capital, as well as household names like Huawei and Xiaomi, are among the investors according to a Nikkei article. Oppo is creating its own premium CPUs for flagship mobile phones. According to two persons who talked to the publication, the availability of customized socks was scheduled for 2023 or 2024, depending on the speed of development. According to reports, Oppo plans to make the chips with TSMC's cutting-edge 3 nanometers manufacturing technology. Oppo would be the most recent significant smartphone manufacturer to assume control of its own SoC design, if plans materialize. The Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro are Google's first smartphones using a unique SoC dubbed Tensor, as did Huawei until US sanctions wiped off its mobile industry. Apple, Samsung, and other smartphone manufacturers all develop their own processors. Currently, Oppo utilizes Qualcomm and MediaTek CPUs, just like many other Chinese smartphone manufacturers do following the ban on Huawei. For its low-cost Mi 5C phone, Xiaomi created and introduced a low-end SoC dubbed the Surge S1 in 2017, but ever subsequently, its chip design efforts have been restricted to auxiliary parts like image signal processors. AS Qualcomm blatantly stated in a sarcastic Google subtweet last week, it would suffer if large corporations like Oppo decided to handle their own SoC design. According to IDC, Oppo is the fourth biggest smartphone manufacturer in the world in terms of shipping volume. Because it is owned by and has a supply chain with Vivo, Realme, and OnePlus, Oppo developed processors may appear in a variety of phones soon. The semiconductor sector demands extensive years-long investment with no quick payback. The Huawei-owned High Silicon took more than 10 years to gain a foothold in the global semiconductor business, and it is still unable to compete with the market leaders. It will take at least a few more years until there are clear evidence of who is thriving and who is failing in the chip game for new players. Thanks for having your watching in this video. You can add your ideas or suggestions below. Please keep following our channel and like our videos.